Assalamualaikum dear students. Uh, we had started already a chapter um, that's chemical bonding and in chemical bonding we have discussed a number of questions such as how these ionic bonds are formed and what is an ionic bond, uh, what is a covalent bond, what is a coordinate bond, uh, what is this valence bond theory and uh, there is one more question that we have and uh, we have already discussed this Fajano's rules, uh, rule as well and there is one more question that we have to discuss that's called this valence Vesper theory that's also called uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and that uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory that was given by JLSP that was given by nylon and this uh, Vesper theory was given in order to explain the shape of these covalent molecules or covalent compounds According to GLSP and nylon, uh, the different pairs of electrons that are present around the central central atom in a covalent compound, they repel each other. As they repel each other, they try to remain as far as is possible. When they remain as far as is possible for them, when there is a lesser force of repulsion, there will be less energy and when there will be less energy, there will be more stability. So these covalent, these covalent bonds try to remain as far as possible in order to gain stability. And while they remain as far as possible from each other, they acquire definite shapes. Uh, and uh, the different pairs, the different pairs of electrons that are present in covalent compounds, they can be bond pairs, they can be lone pairs. Uh, that the strength of the of these forces of repulsion is uh, as um, we have first of all lone pair lone pair repulsion that is having maximum strength then we have lone pair bond pair repulsion then we do have bond pair bond, bond pair repulsion some students might think that why this lone pair lone pair repulsion is maximum you know that lone pairs uh, have minimum distance when they have minimum distance they have more force of uh, repulsion now considering the bond pairs the bond pairs do have maximum distance among themselves if they have a maximum distance among themselves maximum distance means minimum force of repulsion minimum force of repulsion will be in case of bond pair of electrons now as per this uh, Vesper theory the covalent compounds or covalent molecules can have two kinds of shapes they can have regular shapes they can have regular shape they can have irregular shape now what is this first of all regular shape this in this regular shape the central atom that does not have any lone pair of electron and a, the central atom is bonded to only one kind of atoms you can take an example of ccl4 you can take an example of bcl3 you can take an example of ch4 all these belong to molecules with the regular shapes now we do have another uh, shape that's called a distorted shape or that's also called irregular shape a molecule is said to have a, an irregular shape or distorted shape the central atom does have if it possesses one or more lone pair of electrons and uh, the central atom in most of the cases is not to only one kind of atoms now let us discuss this uh, Vesper theory in details now first of all we will we'll be taking molecules with the regular shapes and then we will be taking the molecules with the irregular shapes so we have the question that is the uh, Vesper theory Vesper we have the question that is Vesper theory Vesper theory is actually an abbreviation that is a valence shell we have valence shell electron valence shell electron pair valence shell electron pair repulsion theory valence shell electron pair repulsion valence shell electron pair repulsion theory this theory was given by this theory was given by Gillespie and nylon n y h l o m nylon to explain the shapes of covalent to explain the shapes of covalent compounds according to according to this theory according to this theory the different pairs the different pairs of electrons the different pairs of electrons that is 
lone pairs and lone pairs and bond lone pairs and bond pairs repel each other they repel each other therefore they maximize they maximize the distance they maximize the distance among them cells they maximize the distance among themselves that is they try to remain that is they try to remain as far as far as is they try to remain as far as is possible because lesser the force of repulsion lesser the force of repulsion lesser is energy lesser is energy when lesser is energy therefore more is the stability more is stability the order of repulsion the order of repulsion the order of repulsion the order of repulsion among different the order of repulsion among different pairs of electrons is as under we have lone pair lone pair repulsion lone pair lone pair it is lp lp that is lone pair lone pair repulsion it is more than lone pair bond pair repulsion it is lp lp repulsion that is maximum lone pair lone pair repulsion is more than lone pair bond pair repulsion and that lone pair bond pair repulsion this is lone pair bond pair repulsion it is more than bond pair bond pair repulsion so you, you can observe that lone pair lone pair repulsion is maximum while as bond pair bond pair repulsion is minimum now somebody might think why it happens that it is more lone pairs are two electrons these lone pairs are also two electrons so these two two electrons have more force of repulsion than these two electrons and these two electrons then bond pairs these are also two electrons and this bond pair is also two electrons why these two two electrons two negative two negative have more force of repulsion than these two two electrons two negative and two negative there is a simple reason that these have distance they have distance r r is actually distance when we have distance distance is minimum and distance is minimum among them therefore force of repulsion fr that means force of repulsion force of repulsion is maximum here here in this case bond pair bond pair repulsion this bond pair bond pair repulsion why this is minimum we have distance among themselves we have r that means distance that distance among these bond pairs that is maximum and distance is maximum we can say that force of repulsion will be minimum you can check it if you are taking an example of water molecule in oxygen there are present uh, six electrons in its valence shell so out of those six electrons you know that two electrons they participate in bonding with two hydrogen atoms so one electron is contributed by this uh, uh, oxygen atom another is contributed by hydrogen atom we have one electron contributed by oxygen atom so another electron is contributed by this hydrogen atom so the electrons that are present in the bonding this colon bond this is called a bond pair so this is bp bond pair of electron this is also called a bp that is bond pair of electron so you can show it like this this is also bp that is bond pair of electron now oxygen had six electrons in bonding but it used only two electrons in the bonding so it will be having on the top one lone pair so here i'll be having another lone pair so it has two lone pairs of electrons now you can check yourself that we have this we have this oxygen oxygen and oxygen these lone pairs the distance among them is we have distance r 
this distance r this is minimum this is distance r1 this distance r1 is minimum so we can say that this distance r1 this distance r1 uh, we can represent it r1 so this distance r1 is minimum and this distance r1 is minimum we can say that force of repulsion here will be maximum so i have maximum force of repulsion there is one more distance the distance between lone pairs was represented by r1 the distance between this lone pair so it was lone pair and it is also called a lone pair they were having distance r1 this lone pair and bond pair they are having another distance so you can represent it by r2 this r2 is more than r1 this r2 is more than r1 so distance is slightly more so i can say that this distance is more so when distance is more i can say force of repulsion fr that is lesser so i have lesser force of repulsion now i'm going to bond this is a bond pair that is also a bond pair these bond pairs and bond pairs they have a distance they have, they have a distance that distance can be represented by r3 so i have r1 distance i have r2 distance and finally i do have here r2 distance and that is maximum when that distance is maximum i can say that force of repulsion in this case that force of repulsion will be minimum so we can say these lone pairs were having more force of repulsion because they were very close to each other this negative and this negative this negative pair and negative pair they were close to each other when negative and negative are very close to each other they will be having more force of repulsion this lone pair that is negative and negative they are slightly away from each other so this force of repulsion will be lesser and in this case the bond pair and bond pair they are far away from each other so they will not be experiencing too much force of repulsion the order therefore we can say that, that the order of repulsion is lone pair lone pair is more repulsion lone and lone pair bond pair repulsion and then we are finally coming at bond pair bond pair repulsion that is the minimum force of repulsion this is only because of the different 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 distance among these pairs of electrons now let's according to this theory the coolant molecules can have the coolant molecules can have following types of shapes so we will be having as per so we have as per vesper theory as per vesper theory as per vesper theory coolant compounds have coolant compounds have coolant compounds have following following uh, types they have following types are they have following types of shapes number one is molecules with regular shapes molecules with regular shapes we have molecules with regular shapes now when we say that molecules have regular shapes if central if central atom if central atom has if central atom has no lone pair if central atom has no lone pair what are lone pairs lone pairs are those valence electrons that have not participated in bonding so we can say if central atom has no lone pair and it is bonded to only one it is bonded to only one kind of atoms for ex we have the example we have ch4 carbon is bonded to only hydrogen atoms and carbon was having four electrons in the valence shell and used all its valence electrons in bonding we have ch4 then we can say we have ccl4 we have then beryllium chloride becl2 then we have c ccl uh, we have bcl3 we can take another example that is bcl3 we have one more example that is sf6 sulfur hexafluoride we have one more example that is pcl5 etc all these molecules are believe to be how the uh, scientists believe that they all these have regular shapes and they definitely they have regular shapes now these were the molecules that were having the regular shapes now we have one more type of shape colon molecules have they have molecules with molecules with molecules with irregular shapes molecules with irregular shapes molecules with irregular shapes these irregular shapes are they're also called distorted shapes distorted molecules with distorted shapes if when we say that molecule has a regular shape if central if central atom if central atom is bonded 
its central atom is bonded to a uh, different its central atom is bonded to different kind of atoms in most of the cases the central atom will be bonded to different kind of atoms and if it is not bonded to different kind of atoms it must have in that case one or more lone pair of electrons so we can say that if if the central atom is bonded to different kind of atoms or if if it has if it has one or more lone pair of electron it has one or more lone pair of electrons then the molecule then the molecule is said then the molecule is said to possess then the molecule is said to possess irregular shape the molecule is said to possess irregular shape or distorted shape or we can also say distorted shape in we do have different examples in this case also we have water has a distorted shape because the oxygen no doubt here in this case it is bonded to the same kind of atoms but it does have on the top two lone pair of electrons we have one more example we have nh3 it has on the top one one lone pair of electron we have sf6 it is also having no we have sf4 sulfur tetrafluoride and in this case sulfur was having six electrons in the valence shell it used four electrons in the bonding but still it is left with one lone pair so the the etc we can say so these are the different molecules that do have these irregular shapes now we will uh, we will explain all these um, shapes in details Uh, so first of all we will uh, explain the molecules uh, that is the, um, we, we will take those molecules which have regular shapes uh, in order to determine the shape of a molecule we must uh, know the hybridization of a molecule so the hybridization of a molecule helps us in determining the shape of a molecule the hybridization the hybridization the hybridization of central the hybridization of central atom and shape of a molecule the hybridization of a central atom the hybridization of a central atom and shape of a molecule uh, can be determined can be determined from the following from the following table you can use this table only and only if central atom has no lone pair so the central atom must not have this table can that the table that we are going to make here in the, the, you can use that this table to determine the shape of molecules shape of covalent compounds provided the central atom does not have any lone pair so we can say the central atom this table can be used in that case the central atom the central atom must not have the central atom must not have any lone pair must not have any lone pair that is this uh, table can be used for molecules with regular shapes so i have first of all if I'm going to write like this if I am having hybridization I'm writing here this is hybridization so this is first of all hybridization this is hybridization uh, we can uh, make this table on the other side so we can write here hybridization so I have here hybridization we have hybridization hybridization first of all then we can say what will be bond what will be this uh, bond angle what will be bond angle hybridization the next column we will first of all we have first of all hybridization then we can say that what will be the shape and from the shape we can say that what will be the bond angle so we'll be writing now bond angle so hybridization means intermixing intermixing can occur either between two and when the number comes out to be equal to 2 the first number will go to s and then the second number will go to p as we have already discussed in hybridization so intermixing can occur in between two when the intermixing occurs in between two 
so the finally the number will come out to be equal to 2 so first number will go to s then the other number will go to p so i can have hybridization sp when the hybridization is sp shape can be shape is in fact a linear and bond angle is equal to 180 degrees so intermixing can also occur between three so the number can come out to be equal to three the first number will be given to s then the second number two numbers will be given to p so we can say that hybridization can also be sp2 and we say that hybridization in sp2 shape is written as trigonal trigonal and planar you can say shape is trigonal and planar when we say shape is trigonal and planar the bond angle comes out to be equal to 120 degrees the hybridization that is the intermixing can occur between four the first number will be given to s then the remaining three numbers will be given to p so we can give maximum number to p that is three because p, this uh, p has p subshell has three orbitals so you can write sp3 sp3 hybridization can be sp hybridization can be sp2 hybridization can be sp3 when it is sp3 the shape is called a tetrahedral the shape is called a tetrahedral and at that in that case we have a bond angle of 109 degrees and 28 minutes then we can have number can come out to be equal to 5 that is the intermixing can come can occur between 5 orbitals the first number will be given to s three numbers will be given to p and the last number will be given to d sp3d so this shape when we have sp3d the shape in that case is called a trigonal <coughs> We have trigonal bipyramidal. We have trigonal bipyramidal. When we have trigonal and bipyramidal, in that case, we say that some of the bond angles are equal to 120 degrees and some bond angles are equal to 90 degrees. So we have here two kinds of bond angles 120 degrees and 90 degrees. Then we can have another hybridization that is sp3d2. When we have sp3d2, the shape is called octahedral. The shape is called octahedral when we have shape octahedral and then in that case all bond angles are equal to 90 degrees then we can have uh, that intermixing can even occur in between this was uh, the intermixing occurring between six the intermixing can also occur between seven orbitals so we can say in that case we have sp3d3 when we have hybridization sp3d3 d3 in that case we call the structure is said to have the structure of the compound is said to be pentagonal this is pentagonal and bipyramidal pentagonal and bipyramidal by pyramidal when we have a shape pentagonal and bipyramidal we have some of the bond angles they are equal to 72 degrees you have to first of all in pentagon you have to divide 360 into 5 when we have a pentagon you divide 360 into 5 so we have we have a pentagon we are going to divide in pentagon we have to divide that 360 we have pentagonal we have pentagonal you have to first of all divide that 360 into five parts when we are dividing that into three uh, into five parts we'll be having bond angle equal to 72 degrees and some of the bond angles here will also be equal to 90 degrees so i would like to shoot all uh, all these shapes in front of you like this so the different shapes of these pollen molecules that they can be shown like this we have first of all a linear shape linear shape is a beryllium chloride you know that students this beryllium has having it is having in the last shell two electrons and it, it, it can form two covalent bonds no doubt it was having only two electrons in the last year and it should use lose these it should lose these two electrons and should become stable but you know that it is having a small atomic size and because of that small size it drags its electrons close to the nucleus and whenever it participates in the bond it shows always mutual contribution and mutual sharing that means that it is going to form covalent bonds now as this beryllium is divalent that means that it is going to form two covalent bonds and two these chlorine atoms they are monovalent they are also going to form two covalent bonds with this beryllium so first of all you imagine as if this uh, beryllium you imagine as if this beryllium is as if my fist is beryllium so i'm going to bring here two chlorine atoms this is one chlorine atom on this side and i do have one more chlorine atom on this side you can these caps can be this is a cap you consider that this is chlorine atom this is one chlorine atom this is another chlorine atom so 
this here my fist you can consider that this is beryllium atom so beryllium has formed one bond with one chlorine atom another bond with another, another chlorine atom this beryllium has used one electron in the bonding and this uh, chlorine has also used one electron in the bonding so in the in the central region there are present two electrons that is a bond pair of electrons these two electrons do have negative charge so here i am having two electrons with a negative charge i do have here two electrons also with a negative charge one electron has been used by this beryllium in the bonding and another electron has also been used used by this uh, chlorine atom in the bonding so there is also mutual contribution and mutual sharing so these two electrons have negative charge and these two electrons also have negative charge so this bond pair and this bond pair they are going to repel each other some students can draw the structure of this beryllium chloride like this but it is not the exact structure it is not a stable arrangement of these bonded atoms so this bond pair and this bond pair they have a lesser distance means that there is more force of repulsion when there is more force of repulsion there is more energy and there is more energy means that it is having less stability so what these these bond pairs are going to do they are going to maximize the distance among themselves so what is that going to happen the bond pairs they are moving away from the each other so finally they are remaining at this position one chlorine on this side and another chlorine exactly on the opposite side what's going to happen the bond pair in this case is going to become equal to 180 degree so this shape is called a linear shape you cannot increase the bond angle beyond this because when you are going to increase the distance beyond this what is going to happen this this chlorine atom and this chlorine atom they are going to come close to each other and there will be more again more force of repulsion so you cannot push this chlorine atom further closer to this uh, chlorine atom so whenever it has to stay it has to stay like this so in the central region my fist you imagine that this is beryllium and here is present chlorine here is also present chlorine and here is a bond angle that is 180 degree and this shape is called linear shape you can you can also determine the hybridization of this beryllium atom as we have already discussed in the classroom that hybridization can be determined with the help of hybridization can be written like this we have hybridization of central atom that is a beryllium here hybridization is equal to number of uh, sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs so beryllium has no lone pair and it has two sigma bonds so num how we are going to determine it is hybridization that is number of sigma bonds so number of sigma bonds is two first bond here that is a sigma bond first bond here that is a sigma bond so number of sigma bonds is two and number of lone pairs that is coming out to be equal to zero so what will be hybridization hybridization will be equal to two plus zero and two plus zero that comes out to be equal to two so first number will be given to s and the second number will be given to p so overall the hybridization comes out to be equal to sp so when the hybridization is sp the shape will come out to be linear so this is the linear shape that we have taken and this was our beryllium chloride now we have one more example one more shape that's called a trigonal and planar so you know that we have this uh, boron boron is having in the last shell boron boron is having atomic number five and its electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p1 so in the last shell it is having three uh, electrons as it has three electrons in the last shell so it is definitely going to form three covalent bonds so imagine that this is boron my fist here it is boron so when it is boron as it has three electrons to contribute so i can bring here three chlorine atoms this is chlorine atom that is coming so i do have here one chlorine atom that is also coming and we have one more chlorine atom that is also coming so this is chlorine this is chlorine this is chlorine so how many chlorines i have bought brought here one two three chlorine atoms they have participated in bonding with this boron here this is boron boron is using one electron in the bonding it is it is using one electron in the bonding this chlorine is also using one electron in the bonding so in the region the central region there are present two electrons one electron must have the uh, uh, that clockwise spin another electron must have the anti-clockwise spin so that they are not going to repel each other so we are having here two electrons that's called the bond pair of electron here again the boron is using one electron in the bonding that chlorine is also using one electron in the bonding so there is also present uh, bond pair of electron here again the beryllium this uh, boron is finally having the last that is the third electron it's using in in mutual contribution with this chlorine atom so it has used one electron in the bonding this chlorine atom is also using one electron in the bonding so in the central region there are again present two electrons that's a bond pair of electron so i do have here bond pair of electron here again bond pair of electron here again bond pair of electron and these are three chlorine atoms what is going to happen this bond pair this bond pair this bond pair all these are electrons and they, they are having a lesser distance among themselves when there is lesser distance there will be more force of repulsion again here is a lesser distance there will be more force of repulsion when there is more force of repulsion there will be more energy when there is more energy there is a lesser stability so be this I, I imagine i believe i suppose as if this is the shape of this boron trichloride that is bcl3 but science says that it is not it is uh, it is not it is stable subtraction so what is going to happen these bond pairs they are going to repel one another so one 
once they are going to repel one another this boron this bo this chlorine this chlorine they will move far away from each other some of the students may drive a structure like this but again there is a problem there is these do have these do these have more distance and these have again lesser distance so what is going to happen if we bring this uh, this uh, chlorine in the downward direction and this chlorine also in the downward direction so this shape this shape is called a trigonal shape if you if you if you see if you check what is this total and what is the total angle in a circle the total angle in a circle comes out to be equal to 360 so we have this you imagine as if it is a circle and in the circle the total angle comes out to be equal to 360 so what you are going to do you are dividing this total circle into how many segments into how many parts you are going to you are going to divide it into the three parts so i, I imagine i believe that this is uh, this angle comes out to be equal to 120 this angle also comes out to be equal to 120 and this angle this angle also comes out to be equal to 120 so all angles are equal to 120 120 120 and in this case uh, the shape is uh, the bond pair and this bond pair they have a maximum distance when they have a maximum distance they have a minimum force of repulsion when they have a minimum force of repulsion the shape is going to be the more suitable shape for this boron trichloride and you, this shape is called a trigonal planar if you join this chlorine atom with this chlorine atom like this with the help of a dotted line you you just uh, combine or you draw a dotted line from this chlorine atom to this chlorine atom and from this chlorine atom to this chlorine atom and from this chlorine atom to this chlorine atom what is the shape that you are having this is called a trigonal and planar the shape is called a trigonal and planar and in this shape we have all all bond angles they are equal to 120 you can determine its hybridization as well you are having boron with three electrons in the valence shell this boron used all its electrons in the all its three valence electrons in the bond so it's not left with any it's not left with any uh, that lone pair so the first bond that it has formed with this chlorine that is a sigma bond here it is again a sigma bond and it is forming the third bond with the with this three with this third chlorine atom and this is also a sigma bond so boron is forming how many sigma bonds one two three sigma bonds it is forming three sigma bonds with three chlorine atom and now if i'm going to find out its, its hybridization i'm going to find out a hybridization as we have already discussed in the classroom a number of times and we have we have read this hybridization in details that hybridization of any element that can be determined by using a formula yeah hybridization is equal to number of sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs so we have we have this the central atom it is not left with any lone pair so number of sigma bonds of the central atom this is sigma sigma and sigma so number of sigma bonds will come out come out to be equal to three so you are first writing number of sigma bonds that is three plus number of lone pairs that's coming out to be equal to zero so we have three plus zero that three plus zero comes out to be equal to three the first number will be given to s then the remaining two numbers will be given to p so you are having its hybridization that's equal to sp2 and whenever the hybridization is sp2 and the central atom does not have any lone pair the bond angles are coming out to be equal to uh, they are coming out to be equal to 120 and the shape is called a trigonal and planar so this was the second shape that we were having this is called a trigonal and planar shape now we have another sh another shape that these covalent compounds do have that third third kind of the shape that's called a tetrahedral shape while discussing the tetrahedral shape we can take an example that is of methane you know that carbon has uh, carbon has atomic number six in the first shell it is having two electrons and in the last shell uh, that is in the second shell it does have four electrons as uh, it has four electrons in the valence shell it uses all its four electrons in the bonding as you know that it is tetravalent so when it uses all its valence electrons in the bonding it is not left with any uh, unpaired unpure, uh, that uh, it is not left with any lone pair so i have here you imagine again this my fist this uh, my my hand you imagine that this fist is equal to carbon so it is a carbon it is going to form first bond with this you can this cap can be considered as hydrogen so this is hydrogen atom this hydrogen atom is coming and it is forming bond with this carbon atom so one electron has been this is hydrogen hydrogen is using is using one electron in the bonding and this carbon is also using one electron in the bonding so i have again here hydrogen hydrogen is using this is a second hydrogen that is coming and that is using this one electron in the bonding and carbon is also using one electron in the bonding we have here one more this hydrogen that is also using one electron in the bonding and this is also using one electron in the bonding so there is mutual contribution and mutual sharing so we do have here another hydrogen that is also coming and participating in the bonding so overall i do have here one hydrogen 
then the second hydrogen, then the third hydrogen, then the fourth hydrogen. So I have four hydrogen atoms. What these, this is a bond pair, this is also a bond pair, this is also a bond pair, and this is also a bond pair. These are electrons. Bond pair means they, they are two electrons, they are also two electrons, two electrons, and two electrons. These two electrons have negative charge, these also have negative charge, these have also negative charge. You cannot keep all these hydrogens in the same direction like this. When you are, when you are, when you draw its structure like this, this negative charge, negative charge, negative charge, negative, they are having a minimum distance. When they are having a minimum distance, they have a more force of repulsion. When they have more force of repulsion, it is not too much stable. It appears as if it is, it is going to get exploded. So it is not a stable molecule. What is going to happen? Some of the students in their earlier class, they were, they do draw these structures like this. They take this as carbon. They keep hydrogen on this side, one hydrogen on this side, another hydrogen on this side and one more hydrogen on this side and there is the last hydrogen that is like this they draw the structure like this they maximize the they maximize they maximize the distance it appears to them that this is the maximum distance but you have not, not used all this space uh, 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 for these hydrogen atoms so what you were observing here angle you were it was appearing that the angle is equal to 90 degree here 90 degree here 90 degree here 90 so you were imagine you were assuming that this is maximum distance there is minimum force of repulsion there is more stability but science says that beyond this 90 degree angle there can be more you can increase further this bond angle how you take this as central atom that is carbon you keep one hydrogen in this direction another hydrogen in this direction and last hydrogen in this direction so first you were you were you were you were believing that the bond angle should have a 90 degree but this bond angle can be increased to a more extent like this you can drag this hydrogen to this side this hydrogen to this side this hydrogen to the, the bond angle that they are having this is not 90 this is 190 degrees 100 i'm sorry this is 109 degrees 109 109 and 28 minutes that minute is a part of a degree so i have first of all 109 degrees and 28 minutes that is it is greater than 109 degrees 28 minutes every in every every degree you have 20 you have in fact 60 parts and they they resemble with with the minute hand mm, with the minute hand as in a minute you do have their 60 seconds in the same manner in a degree there are present 60 parts and they as they resemble with those that's why we call them as minutes so we have here 109 degrees 109 degrees and 28 minutes so first we were we were believing that angle should have been 109 degree we were we were believing that angle should have been 90 degree but it it does not come out to be equal to 90 degree it comes more than 90 when it is more than 90 there is more distance Distance. When there is more distance, there is further decrease in the force of repulsion. When there is a further decrease in the force of repulsion, there is a decrease, a more further decrease of energy. When there is a further decrease of energy, there is a further increase of stability. This shape is called a tetrahedral shape. When you have bond angle 109 degrees, when you have a bond angle of 109 degrees in 28 minutes, that shape is called a tetrahedral shape. Now, it is tetra. Tetra means four. Tetra means four. Hadron means equilateral triangles. So how can we draw these four equilateral triangles on this? You you can you if you if you join with the help of a dotted line, if you join with the help of a dotted line, this hydrogen atom with this hydrogen atom. So if you are going to draw it like this, you are going to you are going to join them with the help of a dot, dotted line. You do have here one equilateral triangle on this side. You have one more equilateral triangle on this side. You join this also with this one and you join this one with also with this hydrogen atom so you have how many equal triangles one you have two then three and base automatically comes out to be equal to one more equilateral triangle you have base that is also an equilateral triangle so base is also when you connect this this when you connect this hydrogen with this one you have when you connect this hydrogen with this one this hydrogen with this one and this hydrogen with this one automatically the base will also be a trigonal it will also be a trigonal so we call it in fact that will be trigonal that will be equal to an equilateral triangle so how many equilateral triangles i do have in this shape i have here one equilateral triangle another equilateral triangle and another equilateral triangle one two three and base automatically is also an equilateral triangle so in this shape we have four equilateral triangles that's why i call it as tetrahedral tetra means four hadron means equilateral equilateral triangles so this was the tetrahedral shape we have one more kind of a shape that is uh that's called 
trigonal and bipyramidal and in order to explain this trigonal and bipyramidal a must have a must have their a molecule that is pcl5 you know that students we have in this uh, phosphorus phosphorus is in fact pentavalent as you know that phosphorus is pentavalent uh, and sometimes it is uh, trivalent as well when it uses only it is uh, three electrons in the body that's in the ground state when when you excite its electron by giving it some amount of energy that's called excitation energy it does have a valence that is uh, that is equal to five so now let's assume that this uh, phosphorus is forming five bonds with five electronegative elements that is with these uh, chlorine atoms so again you have to imagine that this is uh, in fact a phosphorus when this is phosphorus, it is going to form one bond with chlorine atom. We have one more bond with another chlorine atom. Here one more chlorine atom. Here one more chlorine atom. So four chlorine atoms have been already brought. Now I'll be having another chlorine atom. So I have here one, two, three, four and five. So five chlorine atoms were there. Some students say, sir, this hand, this my fist, this is phosphorus. Here is present chlorine. Chlorine, 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 chlorine. What has happened? This phosphorus has used one electron in bonding here. One electron in bonding here. This chlorine has also used one electron in bonding here. So the, here are present two electrons. This is called a bond pair. These electrons have negative charge. Here is again one. This phosphorus is using one more its electron in bonding. This chlorine is also using one more electron in bonding. So there is also present a bond pair of electron. Here is also present bond pair of electron. Here is also present bond pair. So overall, this phosphorus has formed now finally five bonds. Now students they try to maximize the distance. They say, sir this the shape should happen like this you know sir you know you have not used this space for these atoms and you have not used this space for these atoms why we are leaving this space free you are you are you know that total angle of the circle that should come out to be that comes out to be equal to 360 and you are dividing that 360 into you are dividing that 360 into five parts and when you are dividing that 360 into five parts Mm, that comes out to be equal to when you have 360 divided by 5 that may come out to be equal to 52 or that may come out to be 54 whatever the angle that comes out to be equal to but sinus says that you can increase bond angle more than this 52 or 54 whatever there is so you have here you do have here you have increased the distance but it's not too much distance if you take this uh, chlorine out and this chlorine also out so what you are going to do you are take, you are keeping only three chlorine atoms in this plane you have phosphorus here there is present chlorine here is also present chlorine here is also present chlorine so how many chlorine atoms we are we are putting in this plane we are we are keeping only three chlorine atoms in this plane so i have here phosphorus keep one chlorine in the upward direction and keep another chlorine in the downward direction so how many chlorine is i do have now, now i have total number r I have total number of chlorine atoms they are coming now out to be equal to five so you check now yourself what should be the bond angle bit among these this is phosphorus chlorine 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 so the angle between this chlorine and this chlorine that comes out to be equal to 120 this is 120 this is also 120 so in these the chlorine atoms that are present in the plane that are present in the plane these have an angle that angle is equal to 120 this is also 120 this is also 120 but the chlorine atom that lies at the top and the chlorine atom that lies at the bottom the angle between these these are called actually equatorial chlorine atoms this chlorine atom this chlorine atom this chlorine atom that is present that are present in the trigonal side that are present in the trigonal side these are called equatorial equatorial chlorine atom and the chlorine that lies at the top and at the lower end or on the lower side these are called actual chlorine atoms so the angle between these equatorial and actual they have an angle of 90 degrees they have an angle of 90 degrees this is also having an angle of 90 degrees but these are also have but these are having an angle that is equal to 120 this shape is called this shape is called trigonal and bipyramidal this shape is called a pcl5 is having a shape that's called a trigonal and bipyramidal you can check that how it is trigonal and bipyramidal if you take this part you join with the help of a dotted line this chlorine atom with this one this chlorine with this one this chlorine with this one so i'll be having a trigonal shape this is a trigonal shape this is a trigonal shape now you keep this chlorine atom on the lo lower side and another chlorine on the on the upper side so you can sh if you now join this chlorine atom with this one this chlorine atom with this one this chlorine atom with this one you see that at the lower end on this side it is it is broad at the lower end and pointed at the top 
anything that is broad at the low at the lower end and pointed at the top that's called a pyramid you can take example of mountains mountains are broad at the base and they are pointed at the top that's like this this is called a pyramid it is broad at the base and pointed at the top that's why i called it as pyramid same is the case here you have pointed at the top you have pointed at the top and broad at the base so this is first pyramid and on the lower side you again have a pyramid like this you can check so how can you draw again you join this uh, chlorine atom with this chlorine atom this chlorine atom with this chlorine atom this chlorine atom with this chlorine atom so what is going to happen again it is it is becoming a pyramidal structure so you can see that it is becoming a pyramidal structure it is pyramid it is broad at the base and pointed at the top so you have how many pyramids you have here one pyramid one pyramid at the upper on the upper side and another pyramid at the lower lower side so you have two pyramids but the shape comes out to be equal to trigonal and bipyramidal because if you join this one this part with this one this part with this one you have here a trigonal shape trigonal shape and then it is bipyramidal this is a pyramidal part this is also a pyramidal part so the shape is called a trigonal and bi bipyramidal if you are going to find out its hybridization that is the hybridization of this phosphorus atom the first of all bond it is going to form with this chlorine atom this is a sigma bond this is also 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 a sigma bond so we have this phosphorus it is forming how many sigma bonds five sigma bonds first second third fourth and fifth and it's not left with any uh, that's called a lone pair it had five electrons in the valence and it used all its five valence electrons in the body so if i am going to find out hybridization hybridization can be determined by using the formula hybridization is equal to number of sigma bonds so the number of sigma bonds of this phosphorus that's coming out to be equal to five so number of sigma bonds is five plus number of lone pairs that is zero five plus zero that comes out to be equal to five the first number will be given to s the three numbers will be given to p so i have sp3 then the last uh, remaining number will be given to d so i have in this case the hybridization is sp3d so whenever the hybridization is sp3d and central atom does not have any lone pair the shape is said to be trigonal and bipyramidal now we have one more exam one more kind of a shape that is a uh, sf6 and that shape is called an octahedral shape now you know students we have sulfur it is having six uh, six electrons in the valence shell and you can use all those six electrons in the bonding once you are doing it the excitation energy it can use all its valence electrons in the bonding and that the elements with which it can form the, those uh, six bonds they must be electron negative because whatever the amount of energy you are giving from your side that energy must come out and its sulfur should become more stable so we have first of all this sulfur you have sulfur you are bringing here you are having here sulfur you are bringing here fluorine suppose that you are bringing here fluorine you are bringing another fluorine now we have one more fluorine you have one more fluorine i have brought here four fluorine atoms now we have fifth fluorine atom and we have now finally this cap also can be assumed that is also fluorine atom fluorine is our monovalent they are going to form only one bond so i have here how many fluorine atoms six and this is sulfur so you are making a bond like this you have sulfur you are make you are keeping all these bonds close to each other so they are going to repel each other so what is going to happen these bonds will try to move away from each other so they are going to move and move away from each other like this you can draw the structure like this you can make the structure like this so this was fluorine fluorine used one electron in the bonding and sulfur also used one electron in the bonding this is what these caps are fluorine 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 this fluorine is using one electron in the bonding sulfur also using one electron in the bonding so here are present two electrons one is of sulfur another is of fluorine this is called a bond pair this bond pair has having negative charge this bond pair is also having negative charge here is one electron of uh, this sulfur fluorine is also contributing one electron there is present two there are present two electrons that's a bond pair same is the case here there are present two electrons here are present two electrons there are present two electrons these two electrons are repelling these two electrons so they are trying to take, maintain a gap among themselves they are also going, trying to keep maintain a gap among themselves so it appears that the shape should have been like this students say so this sf6 must have a shape like this that is uh, what should be the shape if you join this one this with this one i think it appears it is going to become a hexagonal shape it should have been a hexagonal like this it has a one side another side so one two three four five and six so it appears that it should have a hexagonal shape and the bond angle should have been equal to 60 degrees 
but it's not possible to have this 60 degree bond angle because science says that the bond angle can be increased more than this bond angle. When you are increasing the bond angle more than this bond angle, there can be more distance, there can be lesser, further lesser force of repulsion, there can be more stability. So this hexagonal shape is not the shape of this SF6. So what is going to happen? If you take this uh, fluorine atom out and this fluorine atom also out, so how many fluorine atoms you have taken out? You have taken two fluorine atoms out. Now what you are going to do? You keep these four fluorine atoms in the same plane. One fluorine, another fluorine, another fluorine. And you have here, you have here four fluorine atoms. You are keeping them in the same plane. And you are taking now one fluorine in the upward direction. What is the total angle? What is the total angle in a circle? The total angle in a circle is equal to 360. Now you are dividing that 360 not into six parts but only into four parts. So you have this angle, this is equal to 90 degree, this is also equal to 90 degree, and this one is also equal to 90 degree. So earlier bond angle, then you are when you are believing that it is having a hexagonal shape. In that case, it was appearing that bond angle should have been equal to 60 degree. But in this case, the bond angle is more than 60. The bonds have have increased in further distance among themselves this negative and this negative they have more distance when they have more distance they have a lesser force of repulsion they have a further lesser force of repulsion further lesser energy further lesser energy minus further more stability so i am keeping one two three four fluorine atoms in this in the same plane one fluorine atom is taken in the upward direction and another fluorine atom is taken in the downward direction. So this is the exact shape of this uh, sulfur hexafluoride. My hand is sulfur. This is fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have six fluorine atoms. Now you join this uh, fluorine atom with this one with the help of a dotted line. This is a fluorine atom. You join this with this one, this with this one, and this with this one. So here is coming out to be one equilateral triangle. This is one equilateral triangle one equilateral triangle here is uh, another equilateral triangle with the help of a dotted line you join this with this one with this with this one this with this one with the help of a dotted line so here is coming another equilateral triangle so we have one equilateral triangle we have another equilateral triangle two equilateral triangles now i have three equilateral triangles now i have here one more equilateral triangle so how many equilateral triangles four on the upper side i have four equilateral triangles on this lower side we again have four equilateral triangles you join with the help of dotted line this with this one this with this one this with this one so i have one equilateral triangle on this side another equilateral triangle on this side another equilateral triangle on this side and one one equilateral triangle on will be on this side so overall i have eight equilateral triangles when i have eight equilateral triangles Eight means octahedron minus equilateral triangles. So when I have SF6, SF6 has, it is having octahedral shape. Octa means eight, hadron means equilateral triangle. And all bond angles are coming out to be equal to 90 degree. You can check that this bond angle is 90 degree. It is a 90 degree angle. This bond angle is also equal to 90 degree. And this bond angle is also coming out to be equal to 90 degree. So we have all bond angles in this case. They are coming out to be equal to 90 degree. Now we have the we have the last uh, last shape that we do have that last shape we have that is uh, pentagonal and bipyramidal that is of if7 if7 that is iodine heptafluoride you know that iodine has seven electrons in the bonding in the valence shell when iodine has uh, seven electrons in the in the valence shell it can use all those valence electrons in the bonding it has a large atomic size when it has a large atomic size from the nucleus up to its valence shell there is a large distance when the distance is large it can easily excite its electrons into the into the 3d subshell when you are exciting its electrons you require for that some amount of energy that's called excitation energy or else we are going to form seven unpaired electrons in case of this uh, fluorine atom the, uh, i'm sorry in case of iodine atom so we have now you imagine that this is uh you imagine as if this uh, this is uh, this iodine and i with this iodine we have here one fluorine that's coming and going to form bond with this iodine we have here iodine it has here fluorine with which it is going to form bond i have another uh, fluorine i have one more fluorine i have one more fluorine here again i have here one more fluorine i have one more fluorine so overall i must bring here seven i have here seven so you are going to count now fluorine atoms you can check i have here one two three four five six and seven and while bringing these my hand is here this iodine so 
one electron was contributed by this iodine bond uh, with by this iodine in bonding and another electron was used by this fluorine atom in bonding this cap these caps you consider all these caps they are fluorine atom this fluorine is atom is contributing one electron in the bonding and this uh, iodine is also contributing one electron in the bonding same is the case here it is contributing one electron that is also contributing one electron so here are present two electrons that is a bond pair this is also bond pair these bond pairs have negative charge this also have negative charge these also have negative charge so these are going to repel each other and they are trying to move as far as is possible so students imagine as if their shape should have been like this no not at all science says that you have some angle here yeah you are dividing that 360 into seven parts when you divide that 360 into seven parts might be that might come out to be equal to 52 or whatever is the value 50 or 52 or 48 whatever there is so science says that you can increase this gap more than this value how you take two fluorine atoms out like this when you are taking two fluorine atoms out so when you are taking two fluorine atoms out you can keep one fluorine atom in the upward direction and another fluorine atom in the downward direction like this so what will be the shape if you join now this fluorine atom with the help of dotted line with this one so what you have done you have increased the gap so if you join this fluorine atom with this one this with this one this with this one this with this one this with this one what you are going to form you are going to form a pentagon what will be the shape you have here a pentagon shape you have here a pentagon shape you have here how many sides one side another side third side fourth side and fifth side so you have here first of all pentagon then you call it as pentagonal and bipyramidal what will be the angle in between them the angle between them will be equal to 72 you have to divide 360 360 into five parts when you are dividing 360 into five parts so you'll be having some of these angles these angles equal to 72 72 72 72 and here you are keeping one fluorine in the downward direction and another fluorine in the upward direction these will be having an angle of 90 degrees these will be having an angle of 90 degrees these will also be having an angle of 90 degrees but these will be having an angle of 72 degrees among themselves so in this shape this is called a pentagonal and bipyramidal this shape as you were calling this shape as pentagonal this shape but if you join with the help of dotted line this fluorine with this one this with this one this with this one this with this one this with this one with the help of a dotted line you have this part broad at the base and pointed at the top when you have anything pointed at the top and broad at the base this is called a pyramid if you have here one pyramid in the upward direction you definitely have another pyramid in this direction also you can you can join this with this one this with this one this one and you will get another pyramid in the in the downward direction also so how many pyramids you are getting you are getting two pyramids so this is called pentagonal this is called pentagonal and this is called bipyramidal so we have this shape this is called a pentagonal and bipyramidal and this pentagonal bipyramidal shape is of this uh, if cell and if you are going to find out this hybridization that is the hybridization of central atom that is of iodine atom the first bond here this is a sigma bond this is also sigma bond this is also sigma bond this is sigma bond this is sigma bond this is sigma bond this is sigma bond so all these seven bonds they are sigma bonds now it is not left with any unpaired electron so or lone pair i'm sorry it is not left with any lone pair so you are going to now find out the hybridization. Hybridization is equal to number of sigma bonds. That's number of sigma bonds is equal to seven plus number of lone pairs. That is zero. We have hybridization is equal to seven plus zero. When you have seven plus zero, that seven plus zero that comes out equal to seven. You give first number to S, then three numbers will be first given to P. When you have three numbers, they are given to e, to, e, to P. We have SP three. Then the remaining are only three numbers, and they will be given to D. So overall, we get a hybridization that is SP three D three. And whenever you have hybridization sp3 d3 the shape is pentagonal and bipyramidal and that is r i f7 now we have some molecules which are having irregular shapes how they have irregular shapes they have irregular shapes or distorted shapes or deviated shapes only because of the presence of lone pairs and we will discuss these uh, molecules with irregular shapes as so we have taken first a hybridization that is sp and when the hybridization sp shape is linear we have example here the molecule in which is it is it is that is beryllium chloride we have becl2 is there beryllium chloride is the molecule in which the hybridization is sp and shape is linear and bond angle is 1 180 we have sp2 hybridization when we have hybrid example we can take it is a bcl3 we have bcl3 is the uh, example we have here sp3 
sp3 that is tetrahedral we can take an example that is ch4 is there methane is there whose uh, shape will be like this and we have one more example that is ccl4 carbon tetrachloride is there we have here sp3 that is trigonal and bipyramidal it is the shape of uh, we have an example example is here pcl5 is here an example in which uh, the central atom will be having a shape that is a uh, trigonal and bipyramidal we have sp3 d2, d2 that is octahedral octahedral it is in in case of sf6 that is sulfur hexafluoride when we have sulfur hexafluoride here now we have the last one that is we have sp3 d3 that is pentagonal when we have pentagonal if you have pentagon you divide uh, you divide 360 into when you divide 360 into 360 degree into five parts when you divide 360 into five parts that is uh, that comes out to be equal to uh, 60 degrees and 90 degree that come that will come out to be equal to 60 degree so we'll be having this uh, this um, this angle will come out to be equal to this angle will come out to be equal to in fact it will not be 72 this angle will not be equal to 72 it will be in fact equal to 52 degrees i'm sorry it is equal to 52 degrees and uh, another angle that is the uh, the actual fluorine atom is that this will be equal to 52 degrees and this one will be equal to 90 degrees so it is not 72 it will be 52 degrees and 90 degrees and this pentagonal bipyramidal is the, it is the shape of the compound that is if7 iodine heptafluoride then we have we have some molecules which in which the in which um, in which the central atom has irregular shape so we have we have the uh, next kind of shape and that uh, we have already taken that is molecules with molecules molecules with irregular shapes molecules with irregular molecules with irregular shapes when we have molecules with irregular shapes we are going to take example we have an example of nh3 we have an example of h2o h2 in h2 there are present two lone pairs and in nh3 there is present only one lone pair now let's take first example we have nh3 nh3 when you are taking nh3 you first of all find it out its hybridization we have n then i have h then i have h then i have here again h on the top there is present one lone pair you first of all find the hybridization of the center atom that is nitrogen so hybridization can be determined by using the formula hybridization is equal to number of sigma bonds we have number of sigma bonds number of sigma bonds plus number of sigma bonds plus i have number of lone pairs this formula we generally use to find the hybridization number of lone pairs so we have number of sigma bonds and number of lone pairs hybridization of uh, we were determined the hybridization of central atom that is of nitrogen so number of sigma bonds the first bond here is a sigma bond the first bond here again sigma here the first one that is also a sigma bond so number of sigma bonds is three number of lone pairs that is one then we have three plus one that will come out to be equal to four the first number will be given to s and the remaining three numbers will be given to sp3 when hybridization was sp3 so from the table from the chart so from the table from the table whenever we have hybridization from the table from the table when hybridization from the table when hybridization is equal to sp3 when hybridization is sp3 therefore shape therefore shape should have been shape should have been shape should have been tetrahedral shape should have been tetrahedral when the shape should have been tetrahedral and bond angle must have been bond angle should have been bond angle should have been equal to 109 degrees and 28 minutes but it's not equal to 109 degrees and 28 minutes and neither it is shape is equal to that tetrahedral because of the presence of lone pair now what is going to happen in this ammonia in this ammonia you are expecting that there was present nitrogen here h here is h here is again h and here is present lone pair this bond pair and this bond pair and we have here one more bond pair you were you were assuming or you were you were considering that this bond pair and this bond pair that bond pair bond pair 
they must have these bonds must have an angle equal to 109 degrees and 28 minutes but because of the presence of lone pair these bond pairs they have repulsion with each other this bond pair is repelling this bond pair but from the top there is also coming one more repulsion that repulsion we call that repulsion as lone pair bond pair repulsion so we have here this is lone pair bond pair repulsion lpbp repulsion so we have lpbp repulsion from the top end and you you imagine as if that force of repulsion is fr1 and we have here this is bond pair bp that is bond pair here is again bp that is bond pair so we have here bond pair is repelling another bond pair and that bond pair bond pair repulsion that can be represented as fr2 as you know that the magnitude of lone pair bond pair repulsion that is the repulsion that is coming from the top and that force of repulsion is more than this force of repulsion so what is going to happen that bond angles they will be forced to come closer to each other they were trying to move away from the each other so once they were trying to move away from the each other but, but from the top end there is coming more force of repulsion so they will be pushed closer to the each other when they will be pushed closer to each other with the result of bond angle will get decreases so what is going to happen finally i have nitrogen I have here when so I have here force of repulsion FR1 that is lone pair bond pair repulsion that force of repulsion is greater than force of repulsion FR2 when the when the force of repulsion coming from the top end is more than the force of repulsion than this one these will be these will be constructed these these will be constructed closer to each other they will be brought closer to each other so I'll be having here N I'll be having here H I'll be having here H I'll be having here at so the bond that was lying at this support that has been brought closer to this bond so what is going to happen the bond angle has got decreased this bond angle has got decreased and practically it has been calculated that this bond angle is coming out to be equal to now it is now coming out to be equal to it should have been 109 degrees but it is now coming out to be equal to 107 degrees so there is a decrease in the bond angle because of the presence of that lone pair so lone pair has disturbed or it has deviated its shape and that's why we call these are uh, distorted shapes now when the bond angle is coming out e e to be equal to 107 degrees this shape that this shape that the that this ammonia is occurring this is called a pyramidal shape so it is having a pyramidal shape this is having a pyramidal shape so this shape is called a pyramidal shape because it is broad at the base it is broad at the base and pointed at the top so this shape is called a pyramidal shape we have one more last example of this irregular shape we have another example that is water we have h2o in h2o you are having oxygen with you are having oxygen with the how many lone pairs we are having oxygen with uh, two lone pairs so there is present one lone pair there is again present one lone pair on this side so here are present these bond pairs this is a bond pair this is also a bond pair the first bond here is a sigma bond here again this is a sigma bond you find out the hybridization of first of all oxygen if you are going to find out its hybridization hybridization uh, oxygen if you are going to find out the hybridization of oxygen the hybridization can be calculated by calculating the number of sigma bonds number of sigma bonds is 2 number of sigma bonds is 2 and we have number of lone pairs that is also equal to 2 2 plus 2 that comes out to be equal to 4 when the number comes out to be equal to 4 first number will be given to s then the remaining numbers will be given to p so hybridization is sp3 when the hybridization is sp3 so again here therefore shape from table from the table therefore shape from table should be should be it should be tetrahedral it should it should have been tetrahedral and bond angle bond angle should have been expected bond angle we can say expected bond angle should have been should have been it should have been equal to 109 degrees and 28 minutes again here is a problem due to lone pairs the bond pairs will be pushed closer to each other so finally what's going to happen to the shape so we have here o then we have here h then we have here h you have here on the top lone pair you have here on the top lone pair you are expecting that this bond angle should have been equal to 109 degrees and 28 minutes you are expecting this should have been 109 degrees and 28 minutes but this is here bond pair this is also here bond pair 
there is present first of all bond pair bond pair repulsion bond this is bond pair this is also bond pair this bond pair bond pair repulsion it is you can represent this force of repulsion as fr2 and these lone pairs are also having this lone pair is also exerting force of repulsion on this bond pair and this force of repulsion that is exerted by this lone pair on this bond pair i represent that force of repulsion as fr1 here is also lone pair bond pair repulsion this force of repulsion is can also be represented as fr1 as you know that bond pair bond pair force of repulsion that is fr2 is lesser than this lone pair bond pair repulsion so what is going to happen this lone pair pushes this bond bond pair closer to this bond pair and this lone pair also pushes this bond pair in the downward direction so because of the presence of these lone pairs these bond pairs that are present here they are pushed closer to each other when they are pushed closer to each other what will happen to the bond angle that bond angle will get decreasing if the bond angle decreases from the expected bond angle then that shape is called a distorted shape so what is going to happen as it has two lone pairs it is bond angle is now becoming equal to so bond pairs they this bond pair was here this was also here they are brought closer to each other the bond angle calculated bond angle in case of water so we have here lone pair here again we have lone pair here we have a, a bond angle not 109 degrees it has decreased from 109 degrees so it decreases decreases from 109 degrees to 104 degrees now why there is more decrease in the bond angle in case of water in case of ammonia in case of ammonia the bond angle was decreasing from 109 degrees to 107 degrees only so there was a decrease but not too much because there was only one lone pair that was pushing these bond pairs in the downward direction but what is happening here here is here are present two lone pairs that push these bond pairs in the downward direction so there is more magnitude of lone pair bond pair repulsion than in case of ammonia so here are two lone pairs to repel these bond pairs and in ammonia there is present only one lone pair to push these bond pairs so that's why there is a more decrease in more degrees in bond angle in case of uh, water so why so we can write it like this the decrease the decrease this shape that uh, this uh, water is having this is called uh, angular shape this is angular shape you can also call it as bent shape so we have the decrease in bond angle the decrease in bond angle of uh, this uh, water the decrease in bond angle of water is more and you know, greater it is greater than decrease than decrease it is greater than decrease in bond angle greater than decrease in bond angle of ammonia why because in water we have in water we have oxygen with two lone pairs and here we have only one lone pair than decrease in bond angle of ammonia because in water oxygen because in water oxygen has two lone pairs oxygen has two lone pairs to repel to repel bond pairs to repel bond pairs while in nh3 while in nh3 while in nh3 nitrogen has nitrogen has only one lone pair to repel bond pairs you know that sometimes reverse of this happens it is we have not discussed in vasper theory we can consider it in as an another part of another kind of uh, the force that is responsible for changing the shape of these molecules you have in ethers I have one more ether I have one more example ethers in ethers reverse happens ethers have a general formula R O R R O R this is an alkyl group you can consider it as methyl here and this is R this is also an alkyl group that is a methyl group you know that ether and water they have they have they should have the same kind of a shape you have here O then I can write here C H3 I can write it CH3 I can also write it CH3 so on the top there are present two lone pairs you are you have to first of all find out the hybridization 
and you have hybridization we are working find, find out this hybridization that is equal to number of sigma bond this is a sigma bond this is also a sigma bond number of sigma bonds is equal to 2 number of lone pairs that is also equal to 2 2 plus 2 that is equal to 4 number is coming out to be equal to 4 hybridization is sp3 if hybridization is sp3 now what should be bond angle bond angle bond angle should be bond angle should be what should be bond angle it should have been 109 degrees and 28 minutes but as is the reason in case of water the same reason should also go to this ether as well so you have 109 degrees but as there are present two lone pairs but two lone pairs but two lone pairs should decrease but two lone pairs should decrease this bond angle should decrease this bond angle as in case of water it is coming out to be equal to it was coming out to be equal to should decrease bond angle and should come out and should come out it should come out to be equal to 104 degrees as was in water as happened in water the same thing should also happen in ether as well but it is not having a bond angle equal to 104 degrees in fact it is greater than even 109 degrees so it is bond angle but here occurs here occurs an increase here occurs an increase in bond here occurs an increase in bond angle now how does it happen that it appears as if it is going against to that vesper theory how there is an increase in the bond angle it is bond angle is uh, in fact greater than it is in fact 110 degrees it is in fact 110 degrees or greater than 110 degrees now why it is coming out to be greater than 110 degrees we can check its structure like this we have o then we have c then we have here c we have here h 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 and we have here h these are methyl groups you know that here is present a methyl group that is a bulky group there is also a methyl group that is a bulky group and on the top there are present lone pairs here is lone pair here is also a lone pair so what is going to happen this lone pair is exerting force of repulsion on this bond pair so this is a bond pair so when this lone pair pushes this bond pair in the downward direction when this bond pair is pushed this bulky methyl group should come closer with this bulky methyl group but there is not any space left they do not have any space almost no space almost no space so what is happening this methyl group this methyl group is repelling this methyl group when the groups fight for the space so there is not any space so that methyl group repelling this methyl group they are fighting for the space that force of repulsion that is called a steric repulsion so methyl groups have ch3 groups have methyl groups have uh, methyl groups have they have steric they are fighting for space they have steric repulsion and this steric repulsion is greater than that steric repulsion is greater than lone pair bond pair repulsion that is more than so lone pair is trying to push that bond pair in the downward direction when this lone pair pushes this bond pair to come in the downward direction it strikes with this with this methyl group so what is going to happen they repel each other and the bond instead of coming in the downward direction the methyl group shifts in the upward direction no doubt there is coming from the top and that repulsion but it's going to overcome that force of repulsion so instead of decreasing the bond angle there is an increase in the bond angle so what is going to happen here as uh, the steric repulsion is greater than lone pair bond pair repulsion so they are trying to create a gap among themselves so this methyl group moves in the upward direction this also moves in the upward direction so instead of decreasing the bond angle there is an increase in bond angle so i have ch3 i have here ch3 i was expecting that bond angle should have been lesser than because of that lone pair bond angle should have been lesser than 109 degrees but it is coming out to be greater than 109 degrees it is 110 degrees 110 degrees lone pairs were present there but they could not exert any they could not exert any effect on these bond pairs they could not push these bond pairs close to each other so dear students we have now 
understood this uh, respiratory theory. This respiratory theory helps us in determining the shape of uh, molecules. But to uh, determine the shape of molecules, you must uh, at least uh, memorize this table. This table is very much essential to determine the shape of those molecules in which the central atom does not have any lone pair. Dear students, we will be having another question uh, that will be in fact uh, this uh, Haber's um, process. In fact, uh, we'll be having another question that is uh, this uh, molecular orbital theory. I did discuss a number of times that we are going to take this molecular orbital theory. Dear students, as is the Vesper theory, it is very much lengthy. Same as the reason for this molecular orbital theory. Inshallah, Hutala, that will take me at least uh, three or four lectures to make you to understand this molecular orbital theory properly. But all the lectures that I will provide you on different time intervals. You have to memorize all those lectures that I will provide you. And finally, we will conclude the molecular orbital theory. The molecular orbital theory is the most important question in this uh, chapter. The, from the molecular orbital theory, we are asked a number of questions from the computing exams. But uh, before starting that uh, molecular orbital theory, you have to understand this Vesper theory, this uh, VBT as well. When you memorize or understand all these things, they are going to inshallah help you to understand this molecular orbital theory as well. Um, dear students, now it is the time to leave you and inshallah we will again meet uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Allah Hafiz.